Florian Hagman is a canola yield record breaker from the Canadian prairies, now setting out to try a new challenge, growing canola in the land of green gables and potato farmers. incredibly high record yield of 116 bushels per acre in the 2015 Pioneer Yield Hero Contest, hopes are high for a new start on the island, farming together with his family. Beginning with a challenging spring and planting season hasn't helped things progress very well. But with the constant weather systems coming off the Atlantic Ocean, moisture shouldn't be the limiting factor it often is farming on the prairies. Yeah, well that's not the next one. But, uh, yeah. Prince Edward Island won't ever look the same when the canola fields come into full bloom in a sea of yellow. Cook Farms is a large-scale grain farming, storage and trucking operation located in northern Ontario. For over 40 years, Norm Cook has been centred near the small town of Earlton. The family operation has expanded to over 10,000 acres of farmland with a fleet of 12 trucks. It's a busy family farm. I had subcontracted for years building silos and we started our own company in 74. Um, building silos all across Ontario. Partnered with another brother and built silos in Western Canada based out of Alberta. As interest rates got stupid in the early 80s, silo business kind of went downhill throughout Ontario. Things developed. We ended up buying and getting hold of a few farms and hard red wheat was starting to grow. Canola was starting to grow a bit more. And the first farms we bought, I'm almost ashamed to say, were tiled and 300 bucks an acre. So here's a map of this Tamiskaming area, which is referred to lots of times as the Little Clay Belt. And I have to update it, but the red dots are farms that we farm. So from our shop here at Earlton down here to the furthest one down near Lisker is about 22 or 23 miles. I'm gonna think in miles instead of kilometers. And then by road, and by road over here to these farms here, there's actually one dot fell off. We're about 31 kilometers. So yeah, that shows a good area. And this one I got, what I've been using for a pointer is uh, actually a fly swatter that we use. When new people want to come here, I say, well, you're going to need some of this because we've got extra large flies in our area. So the black flies, it's the kind that take a chunk out of you and go sit up in the tree. You got to whack them. In other areas of the province, south and east, where basically when, when, it's, when it's wheat season, they're doing wheat. When it's corn season, they're doing corn. When it's soybean season, they're doing soybeans. They don't have the multitude of crops that we have up here. Uh, so we have to monitor the moisture. We've got to monitor the temperature. Uh, we want to try to keep, the, in, a, in, a, in a perfect world, we would keep the uh, temperature of the grain in the bins within five degrees Celsius of the outside air. A bit tough to do when we might change the outside air by 30, 35 degrees in a day. But canola, we generally want to get, get rid of most of it in the fall, uh, early winter, and then keep the storage bins for oats and wheat because uh, we're bringing in oats and wheat and, and canola. Some people want to keep it till the price gets better. Um, we can store it here for them till the price gets better and get it conditioned right away in the fall, but it works out good too. It spreads out our trucking that we're hauling basically all winter. Tractors very seldom we buy new, we always try to buy used. And with good maintenance, they seem to last for a long, long time. You can get 20 to 30,000 hours. We had one even, at, we had up to 36,000 hours. I think there's one in here, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six are in here and one's in the repair shop getting checked over, so. They all get checked over before we get using them in the fall and have less and less downtime. Compared to farming 40 years ago, we used to be able to get kids to do a lot of stuff, like t young teenagers that were learning, but now, and you know, you know, 30 and 40 and 50 horse tractors and eight and 10 and 12 foot equipment, 
Now we can't do that anymore with this size of equipment. They have to be a bit older, they have to have some experience. So that's kind of unfortunate on the farm that it's gone that way, but that's the way it's gone to, to be able to get things done. Right now I'm putting roughly about 25 gallons per acre down of nitrogen. On the headlands, I run a little bit slower, but once we get going straight in the field and I set my GPS and I have my auto steer, it's a bit easier for me. So I'll, uh, I can uh, run about 16, 17 miles an hour through the field. In a normal field, it's, I don't have to watch as bad to be turning corners because it doesn't um, leave a pile. But whenever you're in this black muck, you end up having to go a lot slower because if not, it'll leave a big mound like sometimes it can leave a two foot mound of soil and you're crushing that crop that's underneath of there as well we had a really dry spring and the black muck actually absorbed so much heat that there was old leftover logs down below and those logs had actually caught fire in the field and we had to come put out a big portion of the field out over there because it had a caught fire and then we thought it was out and we come back the next day to double make sure that it was and it actually wasn't. There was still a, um, a little chunk that had restarted way down there where you can kind of see that yellow starting. The farm we're on all today is my personal farm I rent out to cooks. Uh, we're spraying on canola, which is about three to four, five leaf stage. We're spraying Liberty. Um, we added copper, venazine, select, and amigo and a little bit of uh, ammonia sulfate just to give it a that little boost. In the past, before we had the issue with Swede Midge, we had, we had grown as much as 6,000 acres of canola a year. Uh, maybe we were overdoing it, maybe we were too tight a rotation, but it was working well until this Swede Midge uh, issue showed up. There's a small insect that lays its eggs in the heart of the young, young canola plant, and then when they hatch, they eat it out and it branches off stupid and slows the crop up by about a month, plus really restricts the yield. Because there's really not a good chemical to uh, use against the Swede Midge that doesn't affect the honeybees. And, and we have to be conscious of honeybees for, for sure, for sure. We have our elevator here with about 2.1 million bushels. Some years that's not enough, we have to be hauling uh, at harvest. We can load four rail cars over at the siding in a day because we got to truck it over there and wagon it over. Uh, four, four cars of canola is about 10 trucks. Mm -hmm.